You are listening to the Smuggler's Galaxy podcast, my favorite podcast to listen to on long flights across the galaxy. This is the way. We want it, men. So 179 of the Smugglers Galaxy Podcast, your favorite Star Wars podcast for smugglers in the galaxy. I'm Glenn, and Jason's over there, keeps muting. He's coughing every now and again. So if Jason sounds weird, that's why. Yep. <laughs> I had it. I had a visitor this week. Oh, you and your, your visitor, man. Uncle Rona. <laughs> it keeps on coming. Hey. Yeah, I'm here. Second, second time I've had COVID. It's not fun. Oh. So it's but. only the second time since celebration? It's the first time since celebration. Or, wow. But it, it followed the same kind of pattern where uh what we got back Sunday, and then we had Monday off to yeah. recover. And then Monday night I got chills, and it happened the exact same way. Like I got chills and uh, I couldn't get warm, and then I had a fever. The fever broke, but then it was just coughing and sneezing. And the only difference this time compared to last time was just the exhaustion. Really? I was napping like twice a day. Wow. And then because I was bedridden almost, uh, my back was hurting. Ooh. So my back still hurts. It's like I, I'm trying to get up and around, and I'm doing like vacuuming today and the dishes and just trying not to be vertical right you know you're old you know you're old when you hurt yourself laying down yeah yeah uh so covid not fun and it's still a thing and i haven't had my booster shot in a while so i'll have to make sure i stay on top of that right uh but yeah it's just i don't know if it was two years a year and a half older and that's why it's worn me down or or what but it, it wasn't it wasn't fun all right that sucks but I'm glad yeah. to know you're. I'm glad to hear you're on the mend. I'm on the mend. Yay, Amy. So there's no. Did you? Did you? Anything come in? Did you pick anything <laughs> yes. up? Yes. Yes. Oh. Things, <laughs> things came in. I didn't have to go out. They just came to me. You're right. Uh, I finished my Boshek Black Series action figure. I got the head in the mail. There's this guy Watto's Scrapyard, Watto's Junkyard, on eBay. Uh huh. And he makes skull. I don't know if he makes the sculpts, but he does print them and mail them out so we finally had a Boshek head um and i like i mentioned last week i got that uh anton merrick action figure the black series one and i converted that into a Boshek body uh used some milliput to sculpt a little bit because he's his body is a little bit different it's more like boss anyways the head came mm-hmm. in i painted it now i have that yeah and then uh the other thing i've been looking for for about four years now uh, finally came in this week. Every time I would go to a show, I'd look for specific items. And if I saw that someone had, um, I don't, they, they call them proof cards, but they're not proof cards. Oh, yeah, yeah. They're like unused card backs. Yeah. What's the deal? I mean, uh, yeah, I, I don't understand any of that, why they would call them proof cards versus unused card backs. Maybe it's not proof card sounds better. Yeah, I think proof card sounds better, but for the most part, I believe they're un- just unused card backs that okay. never got a uh, figure attached to it. But but yeah, I got a Wilro Hood uh, card back, uh, proof card, whatever you want to call it. Um, So I got one of those, and I've been searching that for four years, and the opportunity came, and I was like, I'm going to add that to my Wilro Hood collection. It's funny what those damn ice cream <laughs> patches have done for uh your collecting right yeah, it just yeah. it's like you got a totally different focus now yep i have a wilro hood focus and, and luckily it's just one figure yeah so i don't have to like search out like well there's the power of the force version there's there's the legacy there's the vintage collection there's the vintage version it's like no it's just there's the one figure and 
and now I have an unused card back for him. Hey, Hasbro, maybe that's a figure you can make in your retro line. Yeah, uh, that that could be a figure. They could repackage that for uh, the vintage collection if they wanted to. All right. <clears throat> I don't feel like they will. Uh, it was a peg warmer. Mm, oh, really? Warmer. Yeah. But well, you know, those ice cream patches do work wonders, so maybe people do. want it now. Maybe. Now it's like a $50, $60, $70 dollar figure, depending on where you find it. Wow. Got to love the ice cream. Yeah. And the, and the, the, I guess maybe with the Mandalorian, with the Cantono coming back around, maybe he has a renaissance. Yeah, because it's all coming from him, from that moment in Empire Strikes Back. Right, that 30 second, not even 30 seconds on the screen. <laughs> no, I mean, if I replay it in my head, it's probably like two seconds. Yeah, all it is is, why is that guy running with the ice cream maker? Yeah, that was the joke. Me and my brother and I would watch the movie and uh, we'd be like, we'd get the ice cream, get the ice cream. We'd like make a comment because the guy's running with an ice cream maker. <laughs> and Dave Filoni, that's what he does. You know, a good nerd always will find something and bring it back. But uh, that's all I picked up this week um, other than a virus. Yeah. <laughs> How about you? Um, I picked up a... You remember air jammers back in the day? They the they were little car or not little cars. They were probably six inch cars that you filled with air. They had combustion no. engines and you'd push them. Oh, maybe that's only me. But somebody had a motorcycle one in the box uh, at the meetup uh, yesterday, the swamp meet yesterday, and I picked that up. And then um, somebody also had a gizmo duffel bag that Mandy, believe it or not, didn't have. So I picked that up for her, and uh, that's it. Uh, yeah, just waiting. I made a deal on something, and I'm waiting for it to come to fruition. Make sure I can talk about it before I talk about it. Oh, yeah. Okay. Well, you yeah, know what it is. We, there. Yeah, Thank I've you. sent it to you. you. I've sent you pictures. I just need to. I haven't. We haven't finalized the deal, and I need to make sure I can talk about it. You know, it's one of those double secret probation type things. I don't know what that is. I'm not. I'm drawing a blank. I sent you a picture of it. it said I just bought this. Oh, okay. As I said, congratulations. <laughs> yes. <laughs> well, that explains why you don't remember it if you were bedridden all week. Oh, yes. Okay. Yes, yes. Yes. Okay. It's all back. I looked to see what it was and between the drugs and the, the, the COVID fog. Uh, <laughs> the drugs and the alcohol. No alcohol. Although this morning I was like, what can I smell? So I started popping things open mm -hmm. and I, I did smell some onion no garlic powder and uh, couldn't smell anything else other than the whiskey. <laughs> Popped the whiskey bottle open. I was like, this could clear your sinus. And I smelled it. I'm like, yep. There it is. I'll have a sip of whiskey later. There you go. Maybe you'll smell it and be like, whoa. And then it's a miracle. But uh, how was the, the, the meetup, uh, the swap meet yesterday? Because I was really bummed I couldn't make it. It was actually... It was really good. Um, <laughs> there was a lot of people there. Uh, you know, like it was a typical, typical meetup where you end up talking to people more than you do buying. But I think there was like 50 vendors there. Dang. Yeah. Um, I was looking for stuff for you. I was trying to find those things for you wanted for Rogue Fun, but I didn't see any. Yeah. Um, I think they, there was like a guy that had a bunch of monster stuff there. So that was, that was a new vendor. Um, he had like, uh, shoot, Creature of the Black Lagoon. Like a lot of Creature of the Black Lagoon. And I'm like, where's Shannon when you need him? Yeah. Because that's, that's his jam. That's Jordan's jam too. Well, Jordan was there. <laughs> I'm, I'm sure he saw it. Um, you know, him and him and Richard were there. And I saw Tony and uh, Lewis and April. Daniel uh, made, a, made an appearance too. So it was good seeing Daniel. Uh, yeah. So, uh, yeah, it... <laughs> It, it's the typical show. Uh, Steve, what am I? Steve was there with his stuff, which is uh, a bunch of you know modern, modern stuff. It was a lot of modern, a little bit of vintage. It's starting to get a good mix of stuff, so it's not, um, it's not Star Wars heavy. Yeah. Uh, but I like it because, like I said, you get to see it's it's starting. It you know at the couple of years that it's been doing it. Uh, you're definitely getting a good mix of people. 
and a good mix of toys and a good variety. Yeah. Um, but yeah, I mean, I'm glad I'm, I'm, I'm sad you weren't able to make it. Cause I think the weather was just about perfect. It's a little, little make huh? that April one. Yeah. Yeah. Cause we were talking, um, shoot, I was talking to Tony cause, um, you know, he was trying to figure out when the next meetups and stuff were. And I'm like, uh, we've got one to begin a bit of the beginning of March. Then there's Toy Lana at the end of March. And then there's Rogue Fun, and then it kind of hits you. You're like, oh, crap. Yeah. It's right here. It's like there. Right there. It's in your face. It's like right there. <laughs> you don't realize how close it is until you start talking to people. About oh, I know. I know, I know how <laughs> sure close you, it is. You've got the little, <laughs> instead of a Disney countdown, you've got a Rogue Fun countdown in your, in your house. <laughs> it's a pressure cooker. <laughs> And it's ready to explode. <laughs> it will be fun, dude. It, 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 right now, I think all you got to do is wind it up and see what happens. I think at that point, I, I think we're that, like right there. Uh, <laughs> that was the office reference. Um, yeah, yeah. I think right now it's just focusing on cleaning my house. Getting yeah, back was... ready. I was thinking that today. I was like, "Oh, I gotta clean my I, my collection room." I don't get down there a lot, but it you know it could definitely use me going through it and sprucing it up a little bit. Um, and I'm sure you know with um, Toy Lana, man, Four Horsemen's gonna be there. So I got to figure out how much I'm gonna blow with Four Horsemen, yeah. Cosmic Legion stuff. Yeah. I, at least I'm hoping that yeah. Did you see that big green guy they got? That's like a foot tall. No, nope. they've got this big green guy uh, for Cosmic Legions that he's like a sixty dollar figure, and then in the a secondary market he was around a hundred. So I'm hoping they have him, which will be hope. You know, I can grab him hopefully, um, but I guess we'll see. Uh, I don't know. Everybody's freaking out because of the cosmics. I mean, not the cosmic, the mythic stuff. And I'm like, I like the mythic stuff, but the cosmic legion is just is so much better looking because yeah. i'm i'm a space nerd nerd yeah but yeah um yeah toy lanta is coming around the corner i need to start preparing for that yeah we got a panel to get ready for that i don't know why i thought it would be a good idea to uh, sign me up for a panel in the middle of everything else i'm doing dude you were like yeah man i'll do it and i'll do it all you got to do is probably rip some rip some pictures off the internet. I'm trying to avoid doing that. Yeah. Trying to do it the right way. You're always trying to do I'll have it things. done. I'll have it done. <laughs> yeah, no, you'll be fine. We'll be fine. And then and then we got invited to do another panel. <sighs> so we'll be full of panels. And I think it out. makes sense that I do that one because like the overlap for me mm -hmm. would be the 3D printing. And I, I'm sorry to, it hasn't been announced yet, so. Right. I can't really talk about it, but I I feel like the overlap between the two topics is 3D printing. Uh-huh. Yeah. To make me the candidate for that. <laughs> you go for it. And, and you know. But I don't have to. I don't need to. No, if you you know the 3D, <clears throat> yeah, no, no, it makes sense. I didn't think about it that way. I was sort of like, how would we overlap stuff? But no, you're you're right. 3D printing. And you're yeah. a 3D, you're a 3D printing monster. But yeah, Toy Lanto was just going to be a weekend to hang out. Uh, Wayne will be selling his book there, so that'll be exciting. Yeah, I was hearing that because the, the <laughs> book is is kind of not it, it's in transit right now. Yes, and I had heard that he was scared to go to the meetup yesterday because he didn't want to talk to people about his book being lost, not they're not lost in transit, but in transit and being running late and stuff. I love Wayne. <laughs> <laughs> He's he's so genuine, such a right. genuine person. I'm afraid to face the public right now. You're right. It's like, dude, it'd have been fine. <laughs> Sorry, it's... we didn't pack our pitchforks, Wayne. <laughs> You're good. I, I spit you have my thirty dollars, Wayne. I want my I want my book. Hold on, let me see if I can find an Aquaman figure so I have a pitchfork. <laughs> no, dude, you're good. And uh it's gonna it's gonna be great, I'm sure of it. Yeah. But. I'm looking forward to that book. It should be out. We, we, I'm, I'm assuming we'll have it in our hands in the next couple of months. Yeah. If we're not slaves yeah, later to sooner. get everything together. I sooner. mean, slave, volunteered labor. 
I do know that they did things differently. And so um, shipping will be faster than it was with the other book. Okay. The vintage collection. It's less labor intensive too. So, Oh, that's awesome. Yeah. I just know that you spent a bunch <laughs> of time on that vintage collection, collection book in the background, helping with stuff. Yep. Yep. Nope. It'll be out soon. So good yeah. for them. Yeah. No, I didn't. I think he's working on the third, either second or third chapter already. Yeah. Yeah. So he's, he's a busy little bee. I know a second chance for talking that they uh, went and brought a bunch of superpowers to him to let him use for to photograph. Yeah. They loaned it to him, right? Yeah. Yeah. Because <laughs> um, it's a Cyclops, I think. Is is it Cyclops? No, no, it's not Cyclops. Um, the silver one is like twelve, thirteen hundred dollars $1,300. Cyborg. Cyborg. Yeah. I knew I was close. You're very close. <laughs> Except he's got two eyes. Right. <laughs> um, the only news really this week is sad news, more sad news. Carl Weathers has passed away. Yeah, that kind of took me by surprise. Yeah, it did. What was he, 76, 74? Yeah, he was young. He's very young. Early, yeah, early 70s. I, I heard it on the radio and then they're like, oh, yeah, Mandalorian. I went, oh, no. Yeah. Apollo Creed. Yeah. That's my first introduction to Carl Weathers is Apollo Creed. My dad was a huge Rocky fan. And so the, he, those Rocky movies were on replay all the time. And uh, when I lived in Philly, we did make the uh, walk up the steps. And uh, he was a big man. He was like a serious businessman. Uh, I'm turn this into a talk about me. But we we ran up the steps and I go, Dad, put your hands up. And he's like, I don't want them. Dad, put your hands up. You've done it. And so he put his hands up. I took the photo. But... That just goes to show Rocky meant a lot, and mm -hmm. and so it's just tough to to see somebody from that Rocky movie pass away. And uh, no, yeah. that's no awesome. Now we we uh yeah, I was trying to transition into something else, like but I don't know how to just say f. You know, last night we went. Uh, so my, when it was one of my, <laughs> <laughs> I don't know how to train. Yeah, it stinks. What you gonna do? But. Uh, <laughs> <laughs> did you Sorry. like him in, did you like him in predator yeah i dude i haven't watched predator in forever you know what um so we were there's a chat we were today they were talking about him passing in one of our chats and somebody had said that he he was famous for just signing flat pieces he didn't like signing like pops and stuff because he had hand problems and yeah i typed it was probably from that alligator attack and i erased it uh oh from <laughs> happy gilmore like, yeah i was like Cubs. I think it's too I think it's too soon. And then he went on and he signed on to the Mandalorian and he told Favreau he wanted to direct. And Favreau was like, okay, we'll get you in there. Yeah, he did direct an episode, didn't he? He directed two, one in season two and one in season three. Nice. He directed that foundling episode, which I think is the one with the the bird attack or something. Oh. But yeah, he's he's gone and Gone too too young, too soon. And yeah. he was so charismatic, so funny, so powerful yeah. as an actor. Yeah, and they hadn't really announced did it his nobody really knows if he had any health issues, right? No, it said that he passed away in his sleep. Mm -hmm. So I it didn't seem like it was a heart attack or anything. It just seemed like it was, you know, for lack of a better term, his time. Right. <laughs> but yeah, rest in peace, Carl Weathers. Thank you for everything. Yes. So last so, night you went so out. So last night, yeah, no, my. So I have a couple. You've met, you've met John and Ann, my yeah. really annoying <laughs> friend with the mohawk. Um, it was her birthday last night. His birthday is like so they they're like birthdays are like two weeks apart. But we went out uh, last night. We ended up going to this place called Joysticks in downtown Atlanta, and they had comedy. And I thought I played on some small stages. So you walk back in this back room. Like it looks like the back room, like um, David's office at Second Chance. You know how small that is. It's like that small, and the 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 stage is basically a pallet. No, it was yeah. a pallet, like a plastic yeah. pallet that they're standing on. And I'm like, I don't know if we're gonna watch comedy or have somebody come out on a bicycle and ask us if we want to play a game. <laughs> it was, you know, we had fun because it was like ten bucks to get in. And it was about an hour's worth of comedy. And they, you know, it's such a small room that they see you and they can mess with you and stuff. So 
a girl made a, ha a joke about a fedora, and of course I had a fedora on. Another guy was making fun of my friend because he my my friend's got the big long beard, and they're like, "Dude, what do you do? I need to know." And he's like, "I'm a mortgage. I own a mortgage company." And he was like, "You own an effing mortgage company?" He's doing some room work. Yay! Hey, how you doing? <laughs> right, he was. It was good, but it you know it was like, man, for for ten bucks a ticket, it was a good way to kill an hour. So it was fun watching. I guess I'm gonna have to go to local comedy shows now because it was kind of fun. Um, and then we we'll found this some cookie open book. mic night. Yeah, I've done that. I've been to a couple of open <laughs> mics. Um, there, it's interesting when you when you go to that because you do have, you know, if somebody's doing good, they let them go. But when they start stinking, like the red light comes on, and it's like you need to get the hell off the stage. And people sometimes people don't like that, so they'll, they'll they have to like pull them off the stage. Yeah, those comedians are dark. Yeah. They've got dark personalities. <laughs> like even it's very rare for one of them to be like friendly and kind. And then yeah. still be funny. Right. But for the most part, there's a lot of uh, darkness there. Yeah, there was some darkness last night. But cool. It, it, it was just, I don't know. I, I know some people like feeling, knowing what's going on in our personal lives. So. But I did not go to MegaCon to meet <laughs> Michael J. Fox. And I hope I don't regret it. Are you going to the Atlanta Comic Con thing this weekend? Is it this one? <sighs> I don't know. I have to see. I got to figure out how much tickets are and if I feel like going. I think tickets are 30 bucks. I th think I'm going because Josie wants to go. She's a big uh, Flash fan. She liked that TV show, The Flash. Yeah. Um, And there's like a photo op with like three of the Flashites, the uh -huh. Flashians. And so she wants to do that. So I might I might go for just a couple hours and and get that photo with or let her get that photo with them. Right. No, that'd be fun. Um, I'd like that because I got like who's all gonna be there? Is Ant Ant I know Anthony Daniels is gonna be there. There was like mm -hmm. four or five. Uh, Katie Sackoff. Is the armor yep. gonna be there? I think so, yeah. Yeah. I I, I don't know. Is Carl I, Weather supposed to be there? No. Uh, I know he was. I think he was at some cons. I know there was MegaCon. <clears throat> was a big show this weekend that had a bunch of uh, uh, Star Wars people there. Yeah, I'm pulling it up right now, but I think tickets are thirty bucks, so I might hit that. We'll see. Yeah, let's see. Guest, film and, and TV. <clears throat> Go ahead. And then the day this drop. Oh, Alec Baldwin. <laughs> I can't believe. <laughs> Sorry, I just I'm I'm amazed that he's doing cons, but yeah, I mean, wasn't he just indicted? Yeah, I I feel bad for him because somebody basically handed him a loaded gun that he assumed had a blank in it. I mean, what? I I don't want to turn this into, uh, but when you're on a state, you know, somebody hands you something and you, you how are you going to check that? You know, I don't know. I, it's it's his. I guess it's his responsibility too. Right. I, I, I just I, just because you don't know you're committing a crime doesn't mean that you're um not liable for committing the crime. Right. No, I got you. Katie Sackoff will be there. Yeah. <laughs> and then somebody that did some voice work for the Clone Wars. I guess I'd be, huh? Michael Rooker. John Rhys Davies, who played uh, Sala in Indiana Jones. Yeah. He they... was Gimli the Dwarf. Hey, the Ra Randy Quaid, Quaid will be there. Charlie Cox. Um, Daredevil was always one of my favorite growing up. So I just wish that the Daredevil show that they're making right now is more comic accurate and that he's got the sonar abilities. Because, mm -hmm. like, the Netflix show was more like intense hearing, um, which was weird. Uh, yeah, they have a lot of Walking Dead people and Cobra Kai, which I would totally expect because that stuff's filmed here. It's filmed here, yeah. I never, uh, I got tired of Walking Dead. Yeah, I, I watched it just to see how it ended and it just ended really crappy. Um, I know the comic book when it ended, the guy was just like, I'm done. <clears throat> yeah. He, he, he literally was like, it surprised everybody. And he was just like, I'm, I'm done with it. 
Andy Circus. Is he gonna be there? Yeah, he's a living uh god. <laughs> yeah. Oh yeah, he is gonna be there. Yeah. <laughs> yeah. They may be fun. I don't, I'd hate to go to this and it'd be like Henry nothing Thomas. but pops. Yeah, Elliot. Elliot. I can't, I can't watch E. T. without crying every single time. Uh, every single time. Yeah. Don't go, E. T. Stay. <laughs> I wonder if Mandy knows he's gonna be there. I don't know if I told her or not. But we met the guy from uh, Goonie, not Goonies, um, Gremlins at up here. He he's he lives in Atlanta, and he'll make um, Plastic Empire or pull him in every now and again. Oh, I didn't know he lived here. Yeah. And it was, it was like cheap as it was like 40 bucks or something oh. to meet him. Yeah. Um what else? Do we want to talk about the uh on, there it is. Star Wars Podcasting Day. What is, is Star this, Wars Podcasting Day? It is a day to remember the 25th anniversary of the first Star Wars podcast. Uh, what was that called? The, Jedi Talk. Oh, but, okay. Yeah, it was called Jedi Talk. It was the first Star Wars podcast, and it's just a, basically a bunch of podcasters that we. It, it, it's just a day to let people be aware of podcast, and maybe we needed a more <laughs> solid episode for Star Wars Podcasting Day. But I'm sorry for the. There's no news. What are we going to talk about? <laughs> the only other thing I have to mention is uh, that there's an announcement this week, and it seems like every week leading up to Rogue Fun, we have announcements now. Yeah. So well, let's something... do... Yeah. What? No finish. What is? You gonna... no, I was going to say gonna something. Say... You going to say something? Go no, ahead. but Meh. go ahead, say something. I was going to finish up Star Wars podcasting day, but I don't have I anything you else to say about. It. I don't know. It's just a day to let people know about Star Wars podcast. So look it up. The the hashtag is Star Wars Podcast Day 2024. And I think we're like the one of the few that have done it all like four or five years, four years or so that it's done. He's been doing it. Awesome. So what kind of announcement do you have for Rogue Fun, Jason? The Kennesaw Run. Yay. Is I that why I have to clean my house? Yes. Yes. I think we're uh, ready to retire it after this, too. Mm-hmm. <laughs> we've done it what this will be the third time and i think it'll be the last time we're gonna sunset it at least Which for a little bit yeah um we'll put it in carbonite free <laughs> for a couple of years maybe but uh yeah you'll you'll have the opportunity it's uh three ho homes within 11 miles and i think how far is the hotel from my place in tim's it can't be that far i know it's like 20 minutes from me and then you're 15 minutes from me. Right. So you do the math, people. Uh, that's like five minutes away. Right. Yeah, <laughs> it's girl yeah. math. Tim has a lot of uh, cool items, uh, floor to ceiling. <laughs> it's like the ranch of Obi-Wan of the Georgia Club. A lot of great stuff there. I have all, obviously the micro machines and a lot of uh, modern stuff uh, that were in boxes and now they're on display, and now it's time to figure out what to do after this Kennesaw run. And you have a bunch of Bill and Ted cool stuff, Rebel stuff. Um, it'll be at everyone's leisure. We can finally talk about what we were making a couple weeks ago. Yes. At my place. Oh, yes. the. So at each place, you'll get a piece of the Death Star plans. Uh, there's an acrylic piece that looks like it's black and white. And so when Glenn and Ryan came over, we were staining the black with paint and then we were wiping it away. So uh, the white acrylic was stained black because we had somebody go in and etch out the design and it says Rogue Fun at the bottom. Uh, you'll get that at one of our places. Uh, and then another place you'll get a sticker. That's the Peach Death Star uh, logo. Uh, the Georgia Alliance has a, De a Death Star Peach because we are the the Georgia peaches, obviously. And you'll put that on there. But there's a third item, which will take it up a notch. I'm not ready to announce just what that is yet. You'll find out soon. I'm gonna maybe we'll keep that one a surprise. Yeah, I think we should. <clears throat> but yeah, we have like 125, 150 uh of these little um 
Death Star plans that you'll get during the coast uh, coaster during the Kennesaw run. And uh, yeah, that'll be Sunday morning after Rogue Fun uh, from 9 to 12. And then from 1 to 3, we'll do the Bolero. Uh, so there'll be announcements soon about Bolero, or a reminder soon, I guess, about Bolero. Um, but yeah, it's going to be the, the like the wrap-up day, the, the day to just like hang out one last time before everybody goes their separate ways. And uh, it'll be a good way to to kind of break up the monotony of the being stuck inside for eight hours in one room for rogue fun. You can go out and explore and check out collections. Yes. It'll be a fun time. It, it It's always fun having people checking people's <laughs> collections out and having people uh, look at our collections. So uh, I know we're having people from, hopefully this will be, we'll have a different set of people because uh, we're having people from like all over the world come to this. Yeah. So it'll be it's it'll be fun to have those people check out our collections. Um, are your girls ready for the Super Bowl? Do they have their Travis Kelsey jerseys? No, they're not that big into this whole Swifty NFL thing. Really? Yeah, they're just like whatever. It's just okay. I, uh, they've seen Taylor Swift in person. They don't need to see her on TV <laughs> for eighty seconds. <laughs> I didn't. I didn't know if they were going to watch just to see if like he proposed at the end of the Super Bowl or something. Oh, you think that might happen? I think if they win, they're because think about it, it's gonna be like six months before there's any like more Taylor Swift news with Travis Kelsey news. You know, and it's the biggest stage. What would you you think they'd be he'd propose? I mean, how I think that's the wrong time to propose, but yeah. But what do I know? You're a dad, you're just like whatever. Yeah. Yeah. So Anything else? Yeah, I don't even know if I'll be watching the Super Bowl because I could care less about it, truthfully. Couldn't care less. Couldn't care less about it. And maybe um, that's a good reason to go to Atlanta Comic Con on Sunday. Maybe. Maybe. I don't I, I it'll depend on how my weekend goes, if I'm gonna go to the to the show or not. Well, I can't go on Saturday because we got a party on Saturday. Uh, we got a birthday party on Saturday, an eighties <laughs> birthday party. Boom, boom, boom. Right. An 80 themed, not an 80 year old birthday party, an 80s themed birthday party on Saturday night. I gotcha. You gonna uh -huh. dress up like Marty again? No, uh, I think I'm just gonna do like, cause do like, what am I gonna do? Just a jean jacket and a band t shirt and a pair of vans, be done with it. Not gonna go all crazy. Cause I, I don't know what the weather's supposed to be. I've uh, been seeing a lot lately people talking about the hobby sucks right now. What? Have you, seen, have you seen this online? A little bit. I think people are getting more vocal about it. I think it's just like uh, uh, kind of offended. Why because, is that? Because it's like this hobby is what you make it. So if you turn your back on the hobby, then you're part of the reason why it sucks. Yeah, there's things that happen. Yeah. Um. There's people who've been arrested i will just leave it <laughs> leave it at that and yeah that sucks but that's not the hobby right and that shouldn't bring the hobby down there's there's uh vendors out there who manipulate and that's not the hobby yes it sucks right that, that's not the hobby and the hobby is the people who make it you have to put in the effort it's what you put in is what you get out right I think what they're doing on the 12 back group right now with Ross and uh, and Brian Angel, I think that's stellar. I think that's a, a great thing. Um, but yeah, it's, it's, if you think the hobby sucks, it's because, well, you're not doing anything. You're not participating. You're just throwing more garbage into the, the fire, the dumpster fire. Right. Make right. it a better no. place. Yeah. No, if, if, yeah, if you're not happy, change it. You know, be be part of the be part of the solution. Because we've been struggling to get people to come to meetups. Mm -hmm. We've been struggling for uh, uh and we're not struggling. We're, Rogue Fun is a runaway hit so far, and <laughs> and that's because we've put in a lot of work and a lot of energy, and we've made we've made connections with people and said, "Hey, come on down. We're gonna have a great experience." And so, really, it's it's stop complaining that the hobby sucks. It's not that the hobby sucks. It's just that. Maybe you're not doing as much as you should be. Right. No, I, no, I totally agree. I mean, there, there's an opportunity to do 
to change it. So, I mean, there's, there's plenty of opportunities to get involved and to make things better. Mm -hmm. And, uh, I mean, even if it's just joining a Facebook group and, and helping people, all them out, you know, helping that group out. Hosting a meetup. Yeah. Ho yeah. Host heck yeah. Host a meetup. I mean, we've, uh, in the, in the club, we've pushed our meetups back to two times every other month, just so that it doesn't, there's no excuse for people, you know, people, oh, I'm going to get it next month. It's like, well, there's not going to be a next month. Right. You know, try to help, try to get people to come. Um, but yeah, host a meetup, join a club, start a club. If there's nobody in your, in your area, uh, start going to shows. Uh, yeah. It, Cause this year is going to, I don't, I don't want to say it's going to be a rough year. I mean, we're doing our, you know, we, we got the rogue fun thing going, but you know, there's not going to be a lot of national meetups. There's not going to be a lot of uh, content come out, which means there's not going to be a lot of good toys come out. Uh, so I, I think 2024 is going to be a rough year for the for the hobby. Yeah. <clears throat> if there's something you don't like in the hobby, uh, instead of giving it attention, uh, turn your back. Yeah. And don't pay any attention to it because uh, think about like the, the dandelions, the little white pedal things yeah and they're a nuisance in your backyard but the thing to do is uh nothing because if you kick it you're like i gotta get rid of it and you kick it all those little petals fly away those are seeds and then they plant in the ground and then more of those sprout up whereas if you don't do anything and you leave it alone it'll just wither and die right so do that yeah i think that's what uh i think that's some good advice and I'm I'm trying to follow it as best I can to let yeah, things go. It's not easy, but no, especially when there's perceived injustices. <laughs> yeah. Anyways, anything yeah. else? I think we're good. We'll have to come up with some new. Hopefully, there's some news next week. We have to come up with a topic too. Yeah, that would help. We you know we do come up with topics, and then we never do it. Yeah, we got to do that topic. The the uh, now that it's February, we're down a month. <laughs> um, our twenty twenty four Star Wars bingo cards. Oh, we need to do that. Yeah, I have to come up with those. So I need to need to go look at the one that uh, what did the mutant mutineers did? Mickey mutineers. That's Mickey our buddy mutineers. Jordan's podcast. To get a get a feel for what what a uh, Star Wars bingo card would look like. But I mean, that's just the common phrase. Like, I didn't have that on my twenty twenty four bingo card. Right. <laughs> so, at least well, there's not any any big dumpster fires yet this year yet but like if we had put a passing of a star wars actor on our 2024 bingo card we would have hit it already unfortunately yeah, unfortunately but i also think that's kind of um that's an easy one that's true too yeah, they're supposed to be like left field kind of predictions. They're not right. supposed to be infield predictions. Yeah, I think <laughs> I think you kind of do some easy ones and some rough ones and see what happens. But yeah, we need to work on that. And we need to f watch the prequels. Yeah. And we got to finish the Ewok thing, the, the Battle for Endor. Not Battle. For, <laughs> yeah, Battle for Endor, because we watched Caravan of Courage. Yeah, that was years ago, dude. Yeah, I know. <laughs> we were supposed to do the second one. A play by play of the second one. You're right. I think as soon as it came on Disney Plus, we were like, we need to watch it. And hopefully it's still on Disney Plus. We watched the, the first one. We're like, no, we're good for four years. <laughs> no, thank you. <laughs> this isn't bueno. This is not fun. No. no. Um, do you know why the Mandalorian ship is called the Razor Crest? No, why? Because it's got him because it's gotten him out of a couple close shaves. <laughs> uh where did the mandalorian find his missing armor uh, i don't know in the lost and foundlings <laughs> all right should i wrap it up <clears throat> do it thank you for listening to the smugglers galaxy podcast if you could leave a like and a five-star review of the show anywhere you listen to your podcast it really helps us out and points people to our show you can follow us on social media. Uh, you can find us on Facebook, Instagram, and YouTube. Send us an email or message us. We'd love feedback. We'd love to make you part of the show. 
Our email address is smugglersgalaxy at gmail.com. Thank you to Afonso Riviera for the Smugglers Galaxy logo. And thank you to Levi Waterhouse for the music. People collect for the love of it. Hashtag vote with your wallet. Sabine will be on next week. Pass on what you've learned. Be a positive force in the collecting community.